Hello, everyone. Today, we're reading part three of The Case of the Sneaky Snowman. Chapter five, pranks a lot. I'm such a loser, Bess said. Maybe I should get training wheels for my skates. Or maybe Alexi and Svetlana should carry me onto the ice instead, like a big baby. It was Thursday morning. The park was still covered with snow as the girls made their way through the main gate. You're not a loser or a baby, Bess, Nancy said. You were just nervous. Sure, George said. I'd be nervous too if I had to skate with stars like Svetlana and Alexi. And if hundreds of people were watching me. Gee, thanks, Bess groaned. I feel much better now. Make way for the great Madame Chocolata, a voice declared. Nancy turned and saw Toby walking into the park. He was dragging the rolled up purple and gold tent. Walking a few steps behind him was Deidre. They were both dressed in their turbans and capes. There she is, George whispered, the marshmallow medium. Nancy saw a white picnic cooler in Deidre's hand, probably filled with hot chocolate, cups, and marshmallows. Nancy was about to say hi when two kids ran over. It's her, it's Madame Chocolata, a girl said. Madame Chocolata, you rock, said a boy. Thank you, thank you, Deidre said. She held up her hand, but no autographs, please. As the kids walked away, Deidre turned to Nancy, Bess, and George. Her eyes flashed with excitement. Do you believe it? Almost all of my fortunes are coming true, Deidre squealed. And I only became Madame Chocolata because I wanted kids to read my website. Now I'm totally famous, like a rock star. Give me a break, Nancy thought. She hoped Bess and George wouldn't tell Deidre about their missing snowman. It would just give her another reason to brag. What do you think of Madame Chocolata's fortune cookies? Deidre asked. They would be chocolate flavored fortune cookies, of course. Whoa, Toby shouted, check it out. Nancy looked to see where Toby was pointing. A few feet away were some bushes wrapped with white toilet paper. The kids walked over to the bushes to check them out. It looks like some kind of prank, George said. A note was stuck to a branch. It was written in green ink. Nancy pulled it off and read it to herself. She blinked and read it again to make sure it was right. Nancy, what does it say? Bess asked. It says, Nancy said slowly, that's a rat. The snowman. The snowman again? Bess gasped. What snowman? Deidre asked. Um, Nancy said, Rrr. Nancy wanted to change the subject, so she was happy to see their friend Kendra Jackson and Nadina Nardo walking by. But Kendra and Nadina looked sad as they pulled sleds covered with sticky green silly string. Why did you skirt silly string all over your sleds? Deidre asked. Is it a cool new look? We didn't do it, Trend Kendra grumbled. Kendra and I left our sleds by a tree while we made snow angels, Nadine explained. When we came back for our sleds, they looked like this. Do you know who did it? Nancy asked. Kendra shrugged and said, some weird message was written in the snow with pebbles. It said, the snowman was here. No way, George exclaimed. The snowman struck again. And I'll bet it's Sherlock, Bess said. Sherlock, Deidre asked, you mean that snowman you built yesterday? Nancy raised her eyebrow at Bess, as if to say, don't tell her, but Bess was already babbling on. Our snowman did take a journey, just like you said, Madame Chocolata, Bess said, and now he's making trouble in the park. Cool, Deidre exclaimed. What's so cool about that? Nancy asked. It means another one of my fortunes came true, Deidre said. The great Madame Chocolata scores again. Yeah, Toby said. He sagged from the weight of the tent. Scores again. Deidre and Toby left to set up the tent. Nadine and Kendra turned to the girls with angry eyes. Who did you build anyway? Who did you build anyway? Nadine asked. Frosty's evil twin? You built him, Kendra said. Now you stop him. Kendra and Nadine huffed away with their sleds. Wow, George said. We didn't build a snowman. We created a Frankenstein. Nancy didn't get it. How could both her friends believe their snowman was alive? How could they believe in Madame Chocolata? Come on, Clue Crew, Nancy said. Let's find out who's really making all the trouble. And I'll bet it's not Sherlock. 
the girls went back to work. They found more green threads on the bushes. As Bess and George picked them up, Nancy gazed thoughtfully in the distance. This really is a mystery, Nancy thought. Who could the snowman be? Suddenly, something big and white dashed out from behind a tree. A bright blue scarf fluttered from its neck as it darted from tree to tree. Yikes, Nancy gasped. Nancy, are you okay? Bess asked. Yeah, George said. You look like you just saw a ghost. Oh, who is it? Chapter six, snowman or no man? Nancy gulped. She wasn't sure what she saw, so she decided to keep the snowman part to herself. I think I saw a giant white squirrel, Nancy blurted. Yeah, that's it. Bess and George exchanged looks. A giant white squirrel, Bess repeated. Was he carrying a giant nut? George chuckled. Nancy shook her head and smiled. I think my eyes played a trick on me, she said. Let's go to our detective headquarters and sort out our clues. Good idea, Bess said. It's so cold, my face feels like it fell asleep. As they walked away, Nancy glanced over her shoulder at the trees. She didn't see anything big, white, and blue this time. All this talk about a walking snowman, Nancy thought. No wonder I imagined it. Bess stopped at a garbage can. It was filled with bright pink papers. Hey, Bess said, looking inside. These are for the Ice Spectacular show. But what are they doing in a garbage can? Come on, Bess, George said, tucking her cousin's arm. We may be detectives, but we can't figure everything out. Nancy, Bess, and George were happy to reach the toasty, warm Drew house. When Hannah saw the shivering girls, she poured three bowls of steaming hot tomato soup. What did you girls do in the park today? Hannah asked. Build a snowman? Nancy, Bess, and George sat around the kitchen table, eating their soup. We built a snowman two days ago, Nancy said. Now we're trying to find him, George said. Find him, Hannah said. Do you think he melted? No, Nancy, Bess, and George said together. Well then, Hannah chuckled. He couldn't have just up and walked away. The girls exchanged looks around the table. Um, Nancy said slowly. May we have some crackers, please? After lunch, the girls hurried up to Nancy's room. George sat at Nancy's computer to start a new detective file. She named it, What Happened to Sherlock? Nancy and Bess carefully placed the green threads and the note into the clue drawer in Nancy's desk. I still don't get it, Bess said. If somebody knocked down Sherlock, what happened to his things, like his scarf, his boots, the dog kibbles, and the broccoli nose? The guilty person probably took them, Nancy decided, or hid them somewhere. Poor Sherlock, George said, sighing as she typed. Such an awesome snowman, totally wiped out. Wiped out? Wipe out. Remember the kids on the snowboard? Nancy asked. He yelled wipe out before he almost knocked down Sherlock. But he didn't knock him down, Bess said. He could have come back to finish the job, Nancy said. If only we knew his name so we could find him. Maybe he goes to our school, George said. He looked like he could have been in fourth grade. Nancy didn't know many kids in fourth grade, but she did know her good friend, Ned Nickerson. I'll ask Ned, Nancy said. He knows everybody. George stood up so Nancy could sit down at the computer. Nancy clicked the mouse and went online. As she scrolled down her buddy list, she saw Ned's screen name. He was online too. Bess and George peered over Nancy's shoulder as she went as she sent Ned an instant message. Hi, Ned. Do you know a fourth grader who snowboards in the park? The girls waited for Ned's answer. After a few seconds, they heard a chime. Hello. Ned's message popped up on the screen. Bradley Sorensen, he's bad news. Bad news, sounds like our man, George said. Nancy, I am Ned again. How can I find him? Send him an I am. Ned sent back. His screen name is easy to remember. What is it? Nancy typed. She waited for Ned's message. When it popped up on the when it popped up, the girls stared at the screen. Bradley's screen name was the snowman. Nancy gasped. Okay. So the clue crew is getting some evidence to find out what happened to Sherlock the snowman. And they have a lead 
on a boy in grade four whose screen name is the snowman. Maybe he's the same person who's leaving the messages in the in the tree. Okay, so chapter seven, chapter eight, chapter nine. Okay, we have four chapters left, so that'll be two videos. I'll see you next time.